Hi, back again, I guess. <clears throat> Before I had showed you my uh, maple syrup evaporator, and since then I guess I've been working on some chicken stuff. The family been raising some chickens for butchering, so uh, <clears throat> I got some ideas off of the internet. Went to Planet Whizbang and got some uh, ideas on how to make a chicken plucker. This is our chicken plucker. We do have a video somewhere. This will pluck a chicken in about 10 seconds or so. So, and what, this last time we did what? Three chickens at a time, I think? And also, this was the maiden run for our scalder. It's got electronic controls and stuff, and it's also off of Planet Whizbang, so I don't get the credit for it. He does. It was his design. I just made it a little more fancy when his was. Both his plans were making everything out of two by fours and so forth. And since I work in a welding shop that works with aluminum, steel, or stainless, I, uh, I decided to incorporate some of our drop material into it. And so this is what it looks like. And I can show you how the, the scalder works, but without a chicken attached to it. The chicken, we just attach the chicken legs to here. And we do three birds at a time and <clears throat> it keeps the temperature at the right temperature. And basically this is how it works. It just dumps them into the water and brings them back out. And you can do approximately 120 birds in one hour. And it works pretty sweet. First time around, we didn't have to really adjust anything, so. Actually, it worked so good that my son-in-law was running it most of the time, so I'm not sure if it was working good or not. He didn't seem to have any problems. And that's it. i got to put some guards on here yet, because this would be kind of dangerous yet. But otherwise, other than that, I, I don't got to make too many modifications to it. It runs on. And you we got we to gotta plug it uh, into the 110 outlet, and our plucker also works on the 110 outlet here. So This is part of the old hot water heater, but we, usually their brain box goes right here into this here temperature, where the temperature probe goes. So anyway, we had to extend our lines and both of it, different probe, because it goes into an electronic brain box, which is over here, Nick. Temperature probe goes into here. This is the new gas valve, and so it's mounted higher and stuff, and you know, it's got a different, uh, it doesn't have the same sort of a temperature probe. So we had to lengthen, this is for your pilot line, and this is your main gas, and then the electronic stuff goes to your brain box to keep it within the right temperature. So basically we got it wired up so that as soon as you <clears throat> you plug it in you got wired to your brain box because you want that working whether your up and down is working or not and so you know so not, so it's still on even if this isn't turned on as long as it's plugged in and the switch is only for this motor right here so when we turn the switch on well then, then it's working and then the motor's working but the switch has nothing to do with with this part of the electronics you know, then there's a, a transformer in here, so our electronics in the box right underneath here, I got, got is the transformers in here, so it turns our 120 volts down to 24 volts. And that's what everything is running by. But we use a propane tank for oh, heating for, the water. Yep, propane tank, which is oh, right here. Just hook it up back here and our regulator and stuff. And, Away we go with it. You gotta light it, of course, but it stays lit during your process. And what about when you're finished? How do you empty it? <clears throat> we gotta. I don't want to empty it right now. We actually have water in it because I'll kill our grass right in this spot. I'm letting it cool for a bit. But there's a valve right here, and all you gotta do is turn it on, and the water comes out like so. You know, may make a little bit of a mess, but you got a hose. You just kind of clean your mess up and rinse everything off, and then you're done. And it's portable? Yep, got wheels on it. Not Could have had bigger wheels, but I got these cheap at Harbor Freight, so that's why I went with them. The other ones were quite a bit more expensive. Some of the parts cost more than I wanted to anyway. Like it's hard to find this motor very cheap. That's a little over $300 for the gearbox motor alone. So I skimped in other places. And what size is the motor? Uh, I think it's a horse and a half. I think it's a horse and a half, I don't know. The book tells you. If you're interested in building one, you gotta get by his book because you definitely should get the credit for it. It works pretty sweet. 
same with the plucker. That works pretty sweet too, and he's got a book on that. He's also, uh, right now, I'm, I made an apple cider press, and I'm making the grinder now, and that's also from his, uh, his books. Actually, they're not very expensive, so tells you how to do everything. You can be what I consider kind of crude with his designs, or you can be as elaborate as you want. Thanks for watching.